how would I describe cardiac output? I actually would take one step back and tell you that in first I would um, describe blood pressure as cardiac output times resistance. And then I would tell you cardiac output is heart rate times stroke volume. But there are a lot of determinants that make that up. So heart rate is how fast your heart is beating per minute. And that matters. Fast or slow changes the amount of fluid coming into the heart. So if you have a very, very fast heart rate, you have a less time of relaxation phase and filling time of the heart. Therefore, not a lot of volume is coming into the heart. So then not a lot of volume gets ejected out of the heart. And that will affect my blood pressure. Um, another component of cardiac output is, as I said, stroke volume. Stroke volume is the actual blood that is ejected out with every single beat, and that is affected by a large amount of variables, those primarily being preload, afterload, and contractility. Preload is the volume coming into the heart before it contracts. Contractility is the ability of it to contract, and afterload is the resistance that it has to work against to eject its contents. So, I need to be aware of preload, afterload, contractility, and heart rate at all times, which is why I have my patients highly monitored, giving me that information of afterload, preload, contractility, so that I can adjust medications or therapies to manipulate those to the best um, function for the cardiac output. So if I have a very low heart rate, I could augment that heart rate by putting a pacemaker on a patient or a drug that increases someone's heart rate and that will improve my cardiac output. Or I could increase volume for a patient if their preload is low. Or if the resistance is high, I give medication to make that resistance less. So that the overall cardiac output, which is basically the measure of flow every minute, is optimal. So the gold standard way that I would measure stroke volume is by inserting um, something called a pulmonary artery catheter. That is not something that a bedside nurse does. A physician does that at the bedside and we assist with that. This line actually goes into the right atrium into the right ventricle, and it comes out and sits into a pulmonary artery. So what it does for me is, one, it senses any pressure at any time throughout the heart as the body is trying to pump its blood through any of those chambers, and it gives me measures of pressure, so I get an idea of that. But it can calculate stroke volume for me. It actually it gives me a number that I would then take. I know its parameters, and when my parameters, if I do not meet those parameters and my stroke volume is low, I should ask myself then, would my patient respond to fluid right now? Where are they on their Frank Starling curve? And what I can assess is pressures in the right atrium give us an idea of volume coming back into the heart. So if the pressure in the right atrium is low, the thought process is, they must need more volume coming into that heart. And as I give more volume, I should see the pressure increase. Unfortunately, this does not measure volume, it measures pressure. So if I have possibly a valve that connects the right atrium to the right ventricle, it is incompetent and doesn't work, and I have regurgitant blood flow coming backwards, that's gonna give a false sense of high pressure in the right atrium, or I may actually have no volume in the right atrium. So these are things that I need to kind of put into context. When I have a device like this, I need to know, are there incompetent valves or do I have dysfunction to a ventricle that may change those pressures for me and give me a false sense of volume status for my patient. But it can do that actual calculation of stroke volume and give me a very good indication if my patient needs volume or not. But if I do not have one of those catheters placed into my patient, and they're not always there, they're an invasive risk to put into a patient, and they're most commonly used in a space of what we call cardiogenic shock when a heart is in full failure or post-open heart surgery. So when I don't have that mechanism to help me, I go to my typical blood pressure tracing. And in a critical care environment, we use um, an arterial monitoring system. So it's a direct measurement of someone's radial blood pressure. And I can use that number to kind of ascertain a little bit. If I have a low blood pressure, one may think, is it because I have low stroke volume? I have low volume going through the heart, therefore I don't have a lot of pressure in the aorta, so I don't have a large blood pressure. So I look at my blood pressure numbers sometimes to give me an idea what could be my volume status. If it's very low, I always consider volume. 
I consider contractility, and I consider afterload. So I break all those things down. Volume's always the first thing we ask ourselves. It's the easiest thing to give a patient. We can do ways of putting their legs up in the air for a few minutes. Your legs have 300 to 500 milliliters of blood to them, and it is what we call a retractable bolus. So you put their legs up in the air for about a minute and a half, and you see, did their stroke volume improve? And if it did not improve, I put their legs down, and I say to my provider, I don't believe volume is what is needed for this patient. It did not augment their stroke volume. They must need something different.